Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and today we are going to dig into XSS or cross-site scripting. Now XSS is a common yet very dangerous issue that can lead to account takeovers, altering content and more. And getting into the world of XSS is never a bad idea because a lot of companies are vulnerable and a lot of companies want these issues remediated. However, it can often be difficult to reliably and consistently find these issues. At Integrity, we often host XSS challenges, which are a great way to train your skills, but sometimes they're a bit too hard for beginners. And therefore, in this video, we're going to look at some simpler examples of XSS, whilst focusing on how to detect them and how to never miss such issues in the future. This video is meant for people who know their way around JavaScript and very simple XSSs, but who want to level up their skills. Be sure to share this with your friends if you find it useful. These XSS labs that we are gonna look at today have been created by Google, so a huge thanks to them. And without further ado, let's jump into the Google XSS game. And the first level here is the hello world of XSS. And we see that we get this page here. And this page is 404, seemingly a search engine. So I've opened this page here in full screen and now we can get going. Uh, we see that there's only one input. So let's try inputting something such as pink draconian. If we input that and we search, we see that there are no results found for pink draconian. Note that we entered pink draconian and now it is seen on the screen. So this might be a reflected input. We can try that again and in this instance, I'm just gonna prepend an h1 tag uh, and then with my text. Now, if an HTML injection would be possible, we would see, well, exactly this. Pink Draconian and all the rest behind it is now in the h1 tag. Okay, that's great already because we have HTML injection, so then it might be very trivial to get an XSS. So let's try that out. Well, we can input a script tag with an alert and then close our script tag. And if we search for that, we see that congratulations, you executed an alert. And that is how we got an XSS to pop on this first level. However, I said in the beginning of this video that we wanna go for a more, um, a more consistent way of finding XSSs. Because in this case, well, we inputted some text and we noticed that the text was viewed on the page. However, it's not always that simple. In this case, the page is just a couple of, of an image and a couple of text items, but this page might be very convoluted with a ton of other stuff and or reflected, reflected field might be somewhere in very small letters and you may not see it and therefore you may forget to check it. So it would be really great if we can have a consistent way that with every request that we send, checks is one of our parameters being reflected onto the page. And for that, I'm using a burp plugin because I'm using a burp suit here and I'm using the reflector burp plugin, uh, which you can find on this GitHub here. And what this plugin allows me to do, well, it allows me to pretty much do what I just said. It's going to check for every request, all the parameters, and it's gonna check if they are reflected on the page. And if they are, it's gonna let me know here in the targets. So in targets here, I have my XSS game app HubSpot. And then we can see here that it says XSS vulnerable. So if I go onto there and I can pick one of these, at the bottom here it says, well, a reflected parameter was found in the body. The query is reflected one time. And if you look at the request, we can see that the query contains pink draconian here. And then in the response, we can see that indeed it was reflected. So this way, even if we hadn't seen that on the screen, we would have still had this plugin tell us that, hey, there is something here that's being reflected, so you have to check it out for XSS. And that is kind of what I wanna do with this video uh, to show you how you can like consistently find these issues. So don't just rely on randomly seeing things, but rely on um, actually always finding every reflected field. Now, this is obviously the, the easiest way that an XSS could occur. There are many, many more very difficult ways that XSSs can occur. And in that case, finding all reflected fields easily will be of great help. However, reflected fields aren't always everything in XSSs. There are more things and that's what we're gonna check out right now. 
Now we are on to level two. Persistence is key. And in this case, we seem to have a chat application shatter from across the web where we can type something to in the, into the chat. So let's try that, set send test along. And okay, we see that test was reflected onto the field here. So we know, okay, it's reflected onto the field. Uh, let's check out if our cool new plugin that we added to Burp Reflector, if it caught that. So in Burp, I do not see anything here. That's strange. Let's um, open our inspector tools into the sort into the network tab and let's see what happens if we send a request w what happens what happens when we type a new comment so if i type pink draconian we see that no new network activity was made so okay what is going on here in our first level we had a case where we typed in something we sent that to our own computer obviously and our computer then went to the server to ask Hey, what should I show if the user enters this query? The server then responded with the page and the computer shows the page to us. That is how that reflected XSS works. However, in this case, it seems that we contact our computer. We say, hey, I want to post a new comment. And our computer doesn't go to the server. Our computer just knows what to do and says, okay, here's that new, new comment shown onto the page. But how does all of that work? That's, that's a bit strange. Um, but before we get into how that works, let's just see if our traditional XSS works in this case. Let's try to input a script tag with an alert and then close our script tag. And I can share that status and that doesn't work. Wait, what's going on here? Let's see where our script tag is gone because if you look into this message container, into this block code, we have our script elements and we have our alert. But what's happening here? For that, we have to look into the sources of this page. So into the sources, we have this frame and this frame has some JavaScript code here. And this JavaScript code knows to do certain things. For example, if it wants to display the posts, it's going to do all of this. If, it, if we post something, uh, for example, on submit of this post form, it is going to grab our message and save it to uh, the DB here and that DB is, well, a database, uh, which I suppose is our session storage. We can check that out under application in our local storage. We see that we have a database posts here that has our posts. So, okay, everything is stored locally. And then the DOM or the document object model is updated accordingly when we post something. So back in our sources, we can then see that when this, these posts are being displayed, we show them with an inner HTML where our message is being shown. And an inner HTML is a function that you should not use with user input because it allows um, HTML to be rendered onto the page. And if you have user input in there, the user input will be rendered. However, in this case, our script tag was in there, right? Why did our script tag not, not show? Why did it not execute? Well, that's because HTML5 specifies that script tags uh, put into the DOM using an inner HTML shall not be executed. So that's why that doesn't work, but that obviously doesn't stop us. There are so many more ways of getting an XSS that does not rely on a script tag. So let's try one of which, which includes using an image tag. Now our image tag is going to have a source and the source is going to be X. Now, X does not exist. So that is going to throw an error and on an error, we can do something. We can execute an alert. So this will create a new image, try to fetch it from a source that does not exist, that throws an error, and upon an error, we will throw an alert. And let's share that status, and we see that indeed we get an alert. So that's really cool. Um, and we have solved this lab. But how did we solve it? Well, we had to go look into the source code and we had to identify this inner HTML. Now this is called a sync because that is where some user input is put into, which is called a sync. Now imagine that this page has, again has a ton of JavaScript, like loads, and it might be very obfuscated and we may not have an easy way to work around it. Well, in that case, we're in trouble because we might not identify this sync being used here. And that's obviously an issue. 
So again, how can we consistently find stuff like this, find dumb XSSs like this? Well, luckily Burp Suit has created a really cool plugin for it called the DOM Invader. So let's enable that. So in your uh, Burp browser, we can go into the extension Burp Suit and we can enable the DOM inv Invader. We can then reload. And now we have this DOM Invader tab here. If I make it bigger, we can see that we have this weird string here and this weird string is a canary. Now a canary, um, we can use this string onto the page and Burp will look through um, all kinds of different functions that might be vulnerable syncs and it will look to see if this string is used in there somewhere. So for example, if I uh, share a status with this, we can see that we get a pop-up here. Two syncs were identified, one of which being our element.innerHTML, which is in red because that is very vulnerable. And in this case, without even having to look at the code, we notice that, well, element.innerHTML is being used this whole thing is being put into the page, rendered, and it includes our canary. So it is potentially vulnerable to an XSS. Um, and in this case, well, it was. And this is how you can um, reliably and consistently find these DOM XSSs without having to look through all of the JavaScript code, because in some cases it might be a lot. And that is where I'm going to end off today's video. We've learned a lot of new things that I want you to play around with. First of all, I would like to say that the plugins we have shown here, so Reflector and Dom Invader, they are great plugins, but um, it might also be worth it for yourself to look at things that work for you. So that might be uh, finding a different tool or that might be writing your own tool. Those things are always very beneficial for your understanding of the topic. But to recap on what we saw today. Well, first of all, we saw two very simple XSSs. All of you would have been able to solve this without any issues. However, we looked deeper into it and we looked at how we could potentially find them if the situation was more complicated. In the first case, we saw a reflected XSS where our page is reflected or our input is reflected onto the screen. And we quickly noticed that an XSS was really easy. But then we also looked at how we can use a plugin to automatically find that reflected field, which makes it way easier for us to find all XSSs present on a page. In the second lab, then, we looked at a DOM XSS. So an XSS where our input is being put and rendered onto the page by our browser itself. Now this DOM XSS makes use of a sync, in this case, the element.innerHTML. That sync can be vulnerable, and we noticed that, first of all, it didn't work with a script tag. However, with a different kind of XSS payload, we got our XSS to work. We then looked at DOM Invader and noticed that we can pretty much automatically find when these syncs are being executed with our user input, which is incredibly helpful when testing a website uh, or a bug bounty program for XSS. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will tune in for the next one where we look at the remainder, the four remaining labs in this amazing Google XSS game. As always, if you liked the video, like it, subscribe if you want to see more and share this with your friends that really need some XSS training. That's all for me this week. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you back next time.